Happy Halloween, everybody. Welcome back to the ball. I know it's been forever. I had a lot of people uh, asking me, you know, what happened to the, the year in review video. What happened is it didn't happen. I wanted it to. I plan on it to. Like it has been lately with, with the show. Just two main reasons at the time. And also just as big of a reason is, as you guys know, technology transcends at an alarming rate. I did not have to make that sound as dramatic as it is. Basically, uh, we have a computer that is a few years old now, and uh, yeah, we need a new one. We can't afford a new one, so it runs like shit. So putting any type of video on there and doing any type of editing is a major pain in the ass. And even the videos I do now, I actually uh, hope my daughter helps me out with it on her uh, Mac. So. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just a major pain in the ass to do videos anymore, besides the fact not having the time. Anyway, at least I got this in. I got to get a Halloween episode in. Welcome to the annual Horseball Halloween show. Um, definitely my favorite episode besides the Golden Horn Awards, of course. Um, yeah, I hope you guys are all doing well. I, I've missed you very much. Uh, yeah, it's really cool to be here. And uh, this is kind of cool because I haven't had time to do shows and uh, as much as I would like to. And this is kind of cool because it's kind of old school show. It's what I, the type that I've always wanted to do and have done in the past when I had the time. You know, starting off with a little sketch in the beginning intro. Um, I'm gonna do a preview of our Halloween movie day. And then also got a special Halloween uh, film review for you. So it's kind of like an old school show. Um, you know, I always wanted to do, have Horace Ball me more of a, a horror show with different things within the show, like a variety show. Yeah, but it's just good to be back and, and do an actual proper show, I guess I'd, I'd call it. Though nothing about this show is proper. Uh, yeah, it's the most wonderful time of the year, guys. Happy Halloween. Uh, I hope you're having a good month. Uh, the last cut, it's kind of cool because the month of October is amazing as it is anyway for a lot of us horror, horror fans. All the regular stuff, eating everything pumpkin flavored, uh, haunted hay rides. We're actually going on an awesome one tonight actually in the middle of nowhere. Looking forward to that. You know, haunted houses, all the things that, that make us love um, this time of year and this month in particular. Uh, the last couple of years though there's been so many like cool events that have ended up happening in October that are, uh, will be tough to match this year. You know, Last year we saw Fabio Fritzi, um, his tribute to Lucio Falci, we saw him perform in an old opera house. The year before that, we saw Goblin play all their horror-related hits, our gentle songs, in the very same opera house in October. Amazing. The year before that, we had uh, uh, Hope's premiere. It actually might have been, I don't remember how many years ago that was. Three years ago, Hope's premiere for her film Zombie Kids was in October a couple years ago my final show for my band, my previous band, was in October. So we've had like all these major awesome events, amazing events the last few Octobers. So it's tough to compete with that because um, it just seems like every year something amazing happens. This year I'd say though what has stood out, a very cool event happened last week. We actually saw uh, Lamberto Bava's Demons in a theater, which is amazing. It was a great turnout, almost a sellout crowd. Uh, I never thought I would see that amazing classic film on the big screen in October, and that was amazing. So that definitely would be the standout event of this year, was, is none too shabby. Uh, but I'm glad to be here, as I said, and let's let's do this. Um, as far as like the mid-year review, obviously too late to do that. But I will say this, because I've heard a lot of people kind of knock the year, which I guess is not unusual. But um, I think it doesn't compare to last year, of course. You guys know I consider last year one of the greatest years in the genre of all time but I think it's to me it's been quietly and methodically a really strong year and I'm excited to to do the award show and excited I'm sure at the end of the year I might change up the selection show to maybe do more kind of a year interview um, we'll see though and that'll be in December also quickly before we get on um, I want to do a I had a few people over the summer ask me randomly of if I should if I could do a like a q and I did one a few years back they brought that up which was really cool back in season one or two, uh, like, hey, can you do a Q&A again? And I was like, fuck it, that'd be cool. It won't take much from me, um, editing-wise or anything. So 
I'll probably do that maybe in early December or something. So get your questions in. Uh, the first one was cool. It was definitely a revealing thing. If, if you never, if you haven't followed me for that long, our, my first Q and A, it was revealed that some guy it was it's a little weird, but it was pretty fucking cool that uh, Horace Ball can help your your sex drive in your relationship. That this guy it, it helped him out by watching the show. I don't know. It's, I must exude some type of um, magnetism. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so watching the show can improve your libido. So, uh, yeah, we, we learned that from the last time I did a and a so who knows what we'll learn this time. You can be anonymous. I'd actually prefer that, um, unless you really want me to say your name or whatever, but message me. Instead of doing a comment, like, actually message me on here um, so I can keep it separate. And uh, it can be, I mean, of course, horror-related, but I guess I'll say if you want to maybe ask me about music, because I love music, and maybe craft beer, so let's keep it to maybe the three, my three biggest passions of horror music and crap here. Ask me anything you want within those confines. Um, so I think that'll be cool. I guess if only like one person asks a question, I won't bother with it, but anyway. So look for that and uh, let's get to it guys. Uh, yeah, very cool special Halloween film review with a very special guest. Check it out. Thanks for being here guys. Bonjour, everybody. I would say welcome back to a review, but not really. For us it is, because yeah. last time, I think it was the last time I did a review, and we both did a review, was The Conjuring. Um, I'm not big on reviews, in case you guys haven't noticed. I've done a few over the years, but um, probably more than a few, but it's just not a hat I like to wear. Um, but every now and then you're compelled, and we were definitely compelled. Yes. Um, so yeah, we're going to review, but for, quickly, I want to say, everybody, Hopeless Pictures, that is her production company. She's 16 and has a movie production company, so how cool is that? Please go out and support Facebook, just look up Hopeless Pictures, like it, please share it too, I mean, we haven't really seen many shares, so do it. Um, Instagram, look up Hopeless Pictures, she's on there as well, and there'll be uh, continuing updates on her first feature-length horror film, I Dare You Open Your Eyes, which has been completed, and now she begins the editing process. All right, so, down to business now. I want to first say we'll be, re re uh, we'll be reviewing... Wait, can we pause that to clear my throat? Yeah. <coughs> I'm sick. Okay. Um, Blair Witch, 2016 horror film, directed by Adam Wingard. I first have to say um, a couple things very quickly. Um, we are both big fans of Adam Wingard. Um, I go back all the way to his early days, because I know there's going to be people out there who be like, Dude, man, aren't you into his shit? Dude, man. <laughs> he, 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 he did stuff way before you next. Yeah, no shit, thank you. Um, I was into his stuff since Homesick, um, his early stuff, even, um, what was it? Oh, I forget now. Pop. Oh. Pops. Not Pop's Call. I think it was Pop's Call. But here I am uh, bragging how I know his earlier films, and I can't remember. Um, I own it. I love it. I want to say it's Pop's Call. Anyway, it's got pop in it. Um, so yeah, I've been a been big fan of Wingard since the very beginning. I love all his horror films. Um, so when I, this, it came out that it was not actually going to be called The Woods and it was a Blair Witch uh, sequel, I was, of course, very excited. Although seeing the trailer, I was kind of like, eh, the trailer kind of seemed kind of generic. So I was kind of like guarded optimism. But nonetheless, I had a lot of faith in Adam Wingard. And number two, we are big fans of the original Blair Witch Project. Um, it's one of my favorites of all time. I think it's one of... Hopes, yep. uh, one of our cats, Suspiria's favorite. So big fans of that, but at the same time, I did not expect it to be like the first one, so it's not like I had these expecta unfair expectations. Um, and and lastly, before we finally begin, uh, I always got to ramble for way too long before we start anything. We know. Um, I'm also aware that Studios, because this was definitely Wingard's biggest studio-backed, probably funded film of his career, so I'm very much... I'm cognizant of the fact that studios can get their hands in your project and maneuver, uh, they can F with it, we'll say. They have control. They have some, so I, I'm aware of that before someone's like, hey man, you know, so I'm very much aware of the studio effect has on people's visions and creativity. I get that. Here we go, finally. So now, Blair Witch, the premise, um was basically a, I don't remember any of their names. So like, okay. Heather's brother. Yes. Heather from the original film. 
her brother <laughs> see is on like YouTube, right? And sees a, yeah. a video from recently in the same woods in Burkittsville. And he thinks he sees Heather. Mm -hmm. Like this is what, nine years after it took place? Yeah. Something like that. And he, of course, finds out who put the video out. He ends up looking into it and finds like a couple. And, like, his, no, like his friend was doing a documentary about it. Right. And they like all went into the woods with like a bunch of camera equipment and stuff. And we're just going to basically do the same thing that his sister did and try to find the house from the first movie. And they, they go find these people, this couple, right, that, uh, that had gotten this footage of possibly Heather. And of course he's intrigued and they want to go back in the woods and dig further and maybe try to find is Heather still alive um, after all that took place, the crazy um, happenings from nine years earlier. That's your basic premise. So it's, it's, it's a group of people looking for Heather back in those same woods of Blair Witch. Um, and that's your premise. That's as far as we'll go with the, the premise. Um, Okay, so here are the things we liked about the film. I like the music. Oh, wait, no. Alright, so I had to think a little bit. Uh, one thing I'll say I liked about the film, uh, the story itself. I thought it was awesome. I gotta say, this is a found footage style film as well. Like the first um, one. It, I like the story. It was just cool right off the bat hearing Heather's brother talk about his sister. Like, that was just cool as a Blair Witch fan. Like, hearing him reference Heather and talk about the woods and what happened that day. So the actual story itself I thought was really cool and got me excited it, I think it started film. off good. And then yes. you early, can continue. Early, don't, yeah. Starts off, so yeah, we like the early going. Yeah. We like when they were starting to explain the story, where it was going. I thought that was really cool. Um, I liked the the <laughs> stick, seeing all the stick figures. Yeah. Like there was one scene in the woods where there's just a ton of them. I like, liked everywhere. the one part where there was like one that was made out of like logs and it looked really huge and I thought that one was cool. Yeah, the sticks were cool. Yeah. Is that it? <laughs> Okay, um, I got. Is that it? Is there anything else you want to I say that you like? Don't like. The acting was decent. I just don't think they had much to like work with. Yeah, I didn't, had no problem with the cast yeah. at all. Like, none of them bothered me. Yeah. So those are our positives: mm -hmm. cast, story, and sticks. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now let's go to what we did not like about the film. Um, go get I... yourself a drink. It might be well. Go ahead. The the constant jump scares. Okay, that's number one. That's number one. But the thing about it is, I think you guys all know I hate jump scares. I'm sure a lot of you do to certain degrees. Um, but it wasn't even that because, like, when and some it wasn't films, even, like, you a almost scary become thing that happened. right. You almost become used to them in some, especially with a Hollywood-backed film. But these were so over the top; they were almost like parody level. Like I understand jump scares if it's like something actually relevant happening, like like a scary a event. Yeah, but not like someone coming up to another person and be like, "Hey," and it's as like, you saw. Uh, it's spoofed in our uh, intro. Um, that's what we were doing in case you did not get the idea. Um, yeah, the, the jump scares were incessant and just Annoying. over the top. Like, it, it, to me, it felt like it was a parody. They like, got like really Like, we annoying. were making fun of jump scares. Like, yeah. that's, it was just, so those were ridiculous. Um, I want to bring out, I thought the film had absolutely no atmosphere whatsoever. Mm -hmm. When you're filming. Especially with the first one that had, like, most of it was atmosphere that like made it the scary thing is about like forests and woods regardless of your budget of filming it's pretty easy to get atmosphere out of yeah. woods because it's just so naturally creepy and, and awesome mm -hmm. and visually atmospheric and these woods had no atmosphere to me it almost felt like a set yeah because like, they're and also like the fact that they kept ending up in the same spot didn't help that either yeah, I felt like it was a small area. It didn't have the grand feel of yeah, like, like real even woods. With the first one, it's not. It wasn't like they were in a big place either. But you could. It, it still felt, felt way, like the yeah. woods. Yeah, it felt like they were yeah. in the middle of nowhere. This one, you didn't get that that yeah. feeling at all. Um, there's so much to to talk about that. You know, um, <laughs> so no atmosphere, uh, no creep factor at all to me. I mean, mm -hmm. it was cool seeing the sticks in the one scene, but um, there will be spoilers here, so. Sport, this is, you know. Can we talk about the special effects? Sure. I think that's one thing that was good about it. Like, there wasn't much. Not talking about, like, any spoilers. Yeah, I disagree. 
No, I'm, ta I'm talking about the one. I don't. I'm not talking about what you think. I'm talking about okay. about the part where okay, one of the people um, steps on something and ends up getting like a cut on their leg, and oh, and cool. one part pus starts coming out of it, and that it was cool. it was really disgusting. That was cool. Yeah, and it you're actually, right. It I looked mean, really good. General, there was also parts where um, their tents like it thrown up into the air really high. That looked really weird. cool. Um, Okay, but going back to what we just, just like they they show the, I guess what's supposed to be the witch or the, the definition of what they're saying is a witch or some type of creature. Uh, to me, it looked really bad. It was like a stick type figure. Um, it looked totally CGI to me. I know some people have said it wasn't CGI. If it wasn't CGI, to me, they made did a damn good job of making it appear to be CGI. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it at all. Um, I would have rather them not I, show anything. Yeah. If you're going to show something, I would much rather have it be a badass looking like witch yeah like in the witch it just looks like, like a generic demon that you'd see that in like, exactly like a silent hill or some yeah. type of but and that, that goes to say it, the whole film just reeked hollywood generic generic yeah. and the, i got that from the trailer too and i was hoping that the trailer was wrong because trailers aren't always right except for your trailer Especially. coming up that's going to show awesome <laughs> movies um so even that the house at the end which should be such a cool moment yeah totally reeked set to me a little yeah it was way it, i think it was too like over, over designed yeah like it was um to me i thought it reminded me of like a place you could go to in hollywood like those hollywood haunted yeah like, like they would the be at a Halloween amusion Horror park Halloween Horror night like this is the blair witch ride yeah and you go in and there's all these like different corridors and it just didn't have that creepy natural it totally looked like a set to me um yeah so, so that like great that great house, which is such a moment in the first one that's so creepy and, and grand, and it, this one it just lost that to me. So there was like, but I mean, I didn't care at that point. But as the film went out, I was hoping, well, maybe this will have a great ending because I heard that it had a good ending, and we didn't. Who did you out. hear that had a good? I ending heard from. somebody told me some guy. I don't know, <laughs> was walking down the street, and uh, I have people come up to me all the time being the like, hey, 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 man, Blair Witch had yeah. a good ending. So, um. There's many other things. Some ridiculous parts. The part where one woman climbs the tree to try to get... They had a drone, which is actually a cool angle, having a drone yeah. as one of their cameras. I thought that was really cool, because then when, if you get lost, you have it. You can kind of go over the trees see, like, and the see. Path and so, of course, the drone gets fucked up, and it ends up on the top of a very big tree. And they show this girl who's already got a bad leg, like, crawling, climbing this massive tree, just trying to get this broken drone. And it's just so over the top and, like, yeah. no way. Um... There's so many things I dislike. I can't I even like think of everything. So yeah, no atmosphere. Um, the ending at the the house just seemed like a set, and just overall the whole thing felt to me like this is Hollywood doing Blair Witch, and that really sucks because because of that Adam Wingard director. was so not that, and Simon yeah. Barrett was involved in writing. He wrote a lot of his films, so I love both of them. And apparent supposedly Eduardo Sanchez, who I love as a director, as you guys know. I don't know, you know, executive producer can mean a lot of things. He could have absolutely nothing to do with it other than the fact, you know, I support this, I put my name on it. There's no way he saw this film and liked it. I just don't buy it. It makes um, me sad that all these I do, awesome It is people sad. Have, like, after the end of the movie, Wasn't, it's that we have that when feeling? God popped up on the yeah. screen. I was like, this is not... Right. It, we left the theater with an overall sad feeling because yeah. it's like, it just shouldn't... And I, I know some, someone out there, will quickly wrap this up, might yell, hey man, it was probably great and his hands were tied... And the studio, you know, screwed it up. Maybe to an extent, but the point is, if there was, like, only one fault to that film, I could, I could understand that. But, but this was film so was a complete lame. mess. Like, everything about it was lame. Like I said, the studio... Yeah, like even if it wasn't a Blair Witch movie, I didn't think it would be good either. Yeah, yeah. It's not because it's worked unfairly comparing it to the original. It's just this yeah. was a very generic Hollywood film which just happened to have Blair Witch sticks in it. And at the end, this is the house. And, yeah, it was generic, run-of-the-mill... Um, it just felt that way. It felt nothing that, that feeling that other one guard films give yeah. you it wasn't there at all. And it's a damn shame because with the talent involved in this film, it should have been better. And if the studio completely destroyed all the plans that one guard did have, then as a filmmaker, and it's easy for me sitting here, then I think you got to step away. But hopefully you never end up with that situation happening. But so yeah, we give it. A thumbs down. Unfortunately, we hate to say that. I think she summed it up perfectly by when we left the theater. It was an overall like just somber. Yeah, like talk about wanting to like that film. And, yeah. And it it straight up sucked in our eyes. So.
There you go. Which is a shame because it was the fourth horror movie I've seen in the theater this year, which is just insane. And I loved the other three, and I figures the one I hated was ended up being a Blair Witch. The movie. one that I was like most excited yeah, about. Yeah, because like we love the Blair Witch. But anyway, mm -hmm. this film like this, if nothing else, it can't take away the original, and we still have that. It's just maybe you can, maybe <laughs> you can direct a proper sequel someday, huh? We'll That's talk too to much pressure. About it. No, you you'll get it. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. A shame that our last two reviews have been canning. Yeah. Canning or panning? Panning? What? Can, let's can it. <laughs> can it. We totally can can the film, pan it, whatever. Oh, you should make that a thing. Like, you throw it in the can or can? like... I think panning was the, the word I was looking for, Bucks. So we panned. Really panned it. Yeah, that's like what putting, does that it, mean? putting it down. Um, what we just did is panning. Or can it. Can it. Put it away. Put it in the bury it. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for watching. Happy Halloween. And look for... Her trailer. We're out. Stay scared, right? Yep. Later. Yeah, this uh pumpkin next to me, it's really, really large. Um I had to like uh, it's very heavy, fuck it. Um got that, I don't know if you can see this one. I have one behind me too. Is that your stem or are you just happy to see me? Oh cool, and then uh, I just didn't have time to decorate in here, but again, happy Halloween. Wonderful time of the year. Before we get started, let's do this. Go ahead. Pump King, I've tried many beers from across the whole world, no, in the States anyway, of uh, pumpkin beers. And this is still, to this day, by far, in my opinion, the best pumpkin beer. Pump King, I don't know if that is um, clear for you. But by Southern Tier Brewing. Uh, and guys, if you want to be an awesome hipster beer, craft beer snob like me, you got to have proper glassware there, people. Come on now. You can see that. Cheers, everybody. Liquid pumpkin pie. I've been, like I said, over the last year or so, I've been hearing a lot of other people within the community of YouTube saying chars, which is awesome. It, 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 it has spread, and that's uh, really fucking cool. Um, thanks to Crazy for starting that, of course, on the show. Um, and for the record, I do watch your videos, even though I'm not on YouTube filming, I do watch a lot of your videos, and I don't always get to comment, but I am watching you. I'll be watching you. Alright, do it. So every year we do a, uh, this is kind of lip service for people out there that have heard me talk about our event all the time, but please tell me if you guys do this and what you do, and I've actually had some people kind of go by what we do. I know, uh, Buddy Jason over at Beyond the Realms and uh, and Crazy, um, Crazy J, um, they do one now. They get together around Halloween every year and kind of base it similar to ours. They have a classic pick, some headliners. So that's really fucking awesome. And it's as I always say, it's my it's my favorite time of the year, favorite day of the year. Sorry. Um, so our classic pick. It's a it's a film that everyone in our watching viewing group know and love. We consider it a classic. In a lot of cases, it's a well-known film, I mean, typically, but, uh, so this year, went with our classic pick, which we start the day off with, is Candyman. Clive Barker, love this film, I'm sure many of you do, one of my favorite, um, horror film theme songs, I absolutely love that piano-driven, uh, score and theme song, awesome film, so happy to, to make this the pick, love the ending, anyway, we all love Candyman, I would assume, definitely one of the, um, best horror films of the weaker decade of the 90s. Mrs. Um, Lucio Finchi, this is her choice, um, another, this is definitely fit for a classic pick as well, David Cronenberg's The Fly, his remake, Definitely one of the best remakes of all time in horror. Uh, such great practical effects. And absolutely fantastic. Definitely one of Cronenberg's best films, which says a lot, as he, of course, had a great, illustrious year uh, career in the genre before he stopped making horror films, damn you. Um, yeah, The Fly, that is her pick. Great one. I've yet picked up this Blu-ray, I think, last year, and I've yet to watch this on Blu-ray, so that'll be cool um, seeing these effects in HD. All right, Shelly, Mrs. Headbangers pick. This is a cool one. Very rarely are one of our individual picks, I would actually probably say never, 
or uh, a new film from this year because that's usually what our headliners are. But uh, she adored this film. I definitely loved it as well. From this year, the horror comedy cheese fest, whatever you want to call it. Dude Bro Party Massacre 3, even though there are, there's not a sequel. They just threw that um, moniker on there. But if you haven't seen this, guys, highly recommend it. Hilarious film. <laughs> there's one scene in particular. Like, I haven't laughed that hard in a like horror comedy probably since uh, Brutal Massacre. So, which, funny. I guess I like Massacre in my horror comedy titles. So that is her pick. And the other... The other uh, peeps in the group have yet to see that film, so that's really cool. Uh, Ucho Finchie's pick, Jay. His pick is, love this film, Hell Knight. Um, definitely one of my favorite uh, Linda Blair-led uh, horror films. I thought she was great in this. and I don't really usually find her attractive, but I thought she was sexy in this one. Maybe it's that colonial outfit. Uh, great for Halloween, of course. Um, love this cover artwork. You see that? Yeah, I, this is a film that I probably would have watched this month anyway had he not made it his choice. So when he made it his choice, I thought that was really awesome. So, Hell Knight. Chars. Uh, 26's pick. Um, a few of these picks I actually don't have in my hands right now. Um, his pick is uh, Body Snatchers, another 90's horror film. I've actually never seen that film. Uh, so that's really cool. I don't know if anyone else in the group has. I, I don't think so, but I, I remember always wanting to see it. I, I always thought the trailer was cool. It was just one of those films that uh, it's been in the notebook yet to, to buy when he said he was thinking about that. I was like, that's really cool, man, because I haven't seen it, so that'll make it all the more special. Um, so yeah, Body Snatchers. Not Invasion of the Body Snatchers, just Body Snatchers, the 90s film. So looking forward to that. I think it actually has a Blu-ray release coming up this month, so I would assume that he will be uh, picking up that blue to bring over for the, the marathon. So two 90s horror films, crazy. Um, all right, my pick, a 70s film, The Child, Harry Novak Presents. Oh, uh, man, I have a lot to say about this. I'll try to keep it, keep it short. I think this is a really underrated uh, horror film in general, especially for this time of year. I'm doing a... a Kind of a theme on my Instagram this month of picking kind of underrated films that are perfect for Halloween. This is definitely at the top of that list. A film that I've wanted to pick for this day uh, for a few years. You know, it's always the case you kind of have an idea and then it doesn't get picked and then maybe I'll, maybe I'll pick it next year. This is definitely a film that's kind of been one of those for me. Uh, if, you, if you, like me, absolutely adore and crave, violently crave that 70s atmosphere, uh, which I think is one of the main reasons the 70s is the best decade besides the, the amount of films, um, the, the output, but it's just that, that unmistakable 70s vibe, you know what I'm talking about, atmosphere. This film exudes this um, in uh, incredible amounts. Uh, it's, it's an odd film, it's low budget. Uh, I, I want to say that some of the dialogue was kind of like post-dubbed, so in that way it kind of gives it one kind of an Italian feel, it just in, from an audio perspective, but also kind of just adds to the oddness and weirdness factor to it. It's got a minimalist score that's kind of odd and creepy. Just the overall overall tone of the film is very just atmospheric, odd, creepy, cool, amazing. There's a, It takes place around Halloween time. While Halloween isn't like the focus of the film, there are a few um, um, scenes that uh, uh, capture that essence perfectly. There's one fantastic scene with a with a lighted up pumpkin and jack-o'-lantern that's really weird and odd and, and, and eerie and it's really cool, I love it. Um, the ending is, is awesome. There's some awesome looking zombies in it. Just very atmospheric and I, I never hear anyone talk about this film. It's definitely incredibly overlooked and underrated in my opinion. I know Something Weird Video put out a release of this in the States. That went long out of print and I just ended up getting this UK release instead when I picked it up. But my pick, the, the Child, I think that'll go over really long. I'm pretty sure that no one else in the, the group has seen that one. Now the headliners, guys. Cheers. I know you guys love seeing me drink. Um, uh, two films every year, the headliners. They are two films that none of us have seen, and they are from this year. Typically an anticipated films. And one's definitely 
in particular for me um, was one I definitely would have liked to see earlier in the year. Got a lot of praise. Um, but first, the first headline will be The Mind's Eye, which uh, comes from the directors of the indie film from a couple years back, Almost Human, which I thought was a really cool film. Had its problems, very low budget, but really cool film, particularly the final act. Um, so really excited. I think he's taking the next step, just based off the trailer. And um, I think a lot of people called this, was it was it Scanners that they kind of found this as kind of like a Scanners type sequel? I might be thinking of the wrong film um, in its promotion that people were calling it. I don't know if it was Scanners. But anyway, it looks really cool. Excited. Haven't picked that one up yet. Got to buy it in the next couple weeks. So The Mind's Eye, indie horror, indie sci-fi horror, whatever you want to call it. And the final film of our night, our eighth film, when everyone's struggling to stay awake. Not me, though. When we are filled with barbecue and amazing craft beer, Baskin. I know a lot of you have probably seen it. Um, we've held off. We performed abstinence on this this film, and I can't wait to finally watch Baskin. Um, heard a lot of great things. Love the trailer. It looks crazy. And I remember when I first saw the artwork, like, last year, I was intrigued. I was like, that might be a good headliner for next year. And it has. So that's our lineup, guys. Cannot wait. My favorite day of the year. So let me know what you guys are up to. Thanks for watching the Halloween special. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, again, I miss you guys all very much. And uh, if you don't follow me uh, on Instagram, I'm on there quite a lot. Much more than on here. Very active on Instagram. Because it's only, you, you know, you take a picture and you throw it on there and that's it. But I, I do a lot of uh, themes on there. Um, recommendations. You know, things that I would be doing on the show. But just in... And picture form. So look for Horrors Ball on Instagram. I'm very active on there. If you'd like to see it there. Um, again, follow Hopeless Pictures. My daughter, she's working on the editing. We're, we're going to have a trailer out. Please check it out. Please share. I'm telling you guys, obviously I'm biased, but honestly, this film is going to be fantastic. Um, coming from the mind of a 16-year-old and me being having a big acting part in it, um, I'm so honored. And it's going to be probably another year you know, until this film is released to all of you, but uh, I'm telling you, it's going to be fantastic, and I hope you guys really support it, and until then, please support her, her Hopeless Pictures page. Thank you guys, Charles, everybody, happy Halloween, I hope you are having and will have a great month, and uh, again, ask me your Q&A questions if you want, comment, enjoy your month, guys, live your dreams, stay scared, Charles, happy Halloween, I'm out of here, until next time, I'm out.